I will say I, I did have a snazzy little opening that I gave to Eddie, and we didn't get, we didn't get to see it today. But nonetheless, I'm going to take it down a notch and go with an entertaining the entertaining speaker manual and just give you a story about myself and hopefully give you a little entertainment here from fraud. No fraud here, just me in, a, in, a, in an interesting situation. You know, I'm the type of guy now, I'm very meticulous about making plans. So if I'm going to do something, even if I'm going to a corner restaurant, I'm going to look it up on Yelp, I'm going to look it up on Urban Spoon, and I want to see what, you know, what, what the reviews say, Google reviews, if I'm going to buy something, look at Amazon. But go figure, 10 years ago, when I was getting involved in something, I didn't really do my homework. And that thing that I was doing was I was going to the United States Army basic training. Go figure. Basic training, you figure it's a big event in life. Didn't do any homework. Went into a cold turkey. Just said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to show up and just go with the flow and see what happens. I'd seen the movies, seen the TV shows, and I figured, hey, this, this can't be that hard. They're going to yell at me. Things are going to happen. It's not going to be too bad. But let me tell you something. Army basic training, they do a phenomenal job of setting you up for just that. You show up, you think you know what's going on, they throw you for a loop, and then bam, they just hit you really hard to up the shock value. And let me tell you my, my experience with that. I showed up, and when I went, like I said, I had no idea what was going on. I was on a civilian flight to St. Louis International Airport, and I thought when, I got off, when, I, when that plane stopped and that door opened up, a drill sergeant was going to walk in there, even though it was a civilian flight, he was going to walk in there and be like, Flores, Flores, and I was going to raise my hand, and he was going to be like, come here, you're mine. But it wasn't like that, obviously. I, just, I was a civilian flight. I got out. I went to a pre-designated location, and they told me, hey, get on the bus and do this, you know, very cordially and nicely. And I, okay, whatever, got on the bus, went to the next stop, and got to the military installation. I was at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And I stop, and I get to the, you know, I see the barbed wire fences and the floodlights. You know, like, oh, man, this is, this is where it gets serious. You know, they have a military policeman comes on board. He kind of checks everybody's IDs, gets everybody on their way, all right? Get to the final destination for that night, see some drill sergeants out there with their drill sergeant hats, and I, I'm like, this is where the rubber meets the road. I know that the drill sergeant, I know that hat, and I know what, what that means, what the consequences are. So sure enough, get there, they get us out, they speak to us very sternly, but nonetheless, they just sort of facilitate us getting to where we needed to go. No big deal. I'm thinking, all right, let my guard down a little bit. This isn't so bad. I can do this. This is kind of easy, actually. So. Really, what I didn't know, what happened for not doing my homework is I didn't realize that the first week was what they call week zero. So you just kind of do administrative stuff, you medical, dental, get your uniform, get a snazzy haircut, and just wait for your, your basic training to start. But I'm thinking they're already getting started in basic training, so I'm going to let my car down, and this is not so bad. So that Monday, after a week of, the admin, of, of doing administrative stuff, that Monday, they say, hey, get your, your duffel bag, with your green, your big green bag. I'm sure most of you familiar, you've seen in movies or something with the military carry around. And wait outside to get transported to your training location. Okay, easy enough. Go to, my, go to our training location. Sitting there outside, this is me, little young private Flora, sitting there with my bag on my back, waiting to get picked up and we get taken to my, to my training location. So sure enough, a couple of transport vans pull up and you get 14 drill sergeants come out, pouring out with their hats and they're walking around with this look on their face just like, man, somebody just peed in their Cheerios, you know? They're, just, they're mad. They're mad. They're ready, they're, they're ready to get in your face and, and, and say something. So I'm just waiting for this, for this explosion and I'm like, oh man, here it is, here it is. And, but no, they didn't. They just tell you everything sternly and they say, hey, load up in the trucks and do it, you know, do this, do that, sternly, not very nice, but they're not, you know, in our faces and making us do crazy things. So I'm saying, okay, I, I, can, I can deal with this. So up, pull up five cattle trucks. And when I say cattle truck, that's not military speak for some military transport vehicle. Literally, they brought us trucks that transport cattle. And they told us to load up these trucks. So here we are, like cattle, literally, in these trucks. They make us put our bags in front of us. So you're staring at your bag right in front of you, and they'll give you three instructions when you get in there. Shut up, look forward, and don't move. So here you are with a bunch of other dudes, you're carrying your bag, you're just looking straight ahead, all you see is green, and you want to see, you want to look around, I want to know what Fort Leonard Wood looks like. Now, after the fact, I really don't care what it looks like, but nonetheless, <laughs> at the time, I wanted to see what was going on. So of course, the first thing, the truck starts up, we start moving, oh, whoa, whoa, hey, I said don't move! You're like, oh man. It's a break here. I mean, I have nothing to hang on to. So you're like looking around. Hey, don't look around. All right, all right, all right. So sitting there going. 
And what I imagine happened is that at some time before they came and picked us up, they all got together in a meeting similar to the opening scene from Gladiator. And if you remember that, the character played by Russell Crowe, Maximus, tells his, his leadership, he says, hey, at my command, unleash hell. And I imagine that's what they did because they, 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 were, they were pretty straightforward and weren't giving us a hard time, but all of a sudden, I don't know what it was. It was either an imaginary line, a left turn, what it was, I don't know because I'm still bewildered from that moment. But all of a sudden, they unleashed hell. All of a sudden, they just went off and said, you don't know what you got yourself into. You think that this is going to be a joke. You're going to wish you never left your mothers. Uh, just going crazy. And you're sitting there like, whoa, what is going on? They're like climbing up on bars, yelling in your face. And you're like, uh. So all of a sudden at the five minute mark, I mean about five minutes, the trip was going on for about five minutes. At five minutes, they open up the door and they say, get out, get out. Get no instructions, just get out. So you're, you're, you get out. You jump out, your, your eyes are this big, and you look around, everybody's just, it's, it's mass chaos. And predisposition, they had about 12 drill sergeants there waiting for you to get out. So you're running around, and you're like, oh my god, where am I going? What, what, what's going on? And do you have all these drill sergeants just, they're not telling you anything either. They're just funneling you, funneling you into the certain location, but just by yelling and screaming and, where are you going? What are you doing? Get your head out of you nowhere. Da -da -da, whatever. And you're just running around crazy, and they're just trying to funnel you into this big room. And you are completely bewildered, no idea what's going on. And this was this was why you know I didn't prepare for this, and I let my guard down that previous week, and they completely got me. So you run into this room, huge room. It's a big bay. They all get you in in the, in the area where where you need to be. Miraculously, I don't know how, because that was the most chaotic scene in my life. But nonetheless, the first thing they make you do is you're, you're, you had a, of course you had a big breakfast. Again, they let you they let you let your guard down. So you have a big breakfast, drink a, drink a couple of glasses of orange juice. I have a big bowl of cereal. The first thing they make you do is probably the worst thing that could happen is that they, they make you drain a full quart canteen of water. So they want to keep you hydrated, but you have 10 seconds, you have to drain it, and then you have to put it over your head and make sure that there's nothing that drips out. If something drips out, anybody drips out, they're gonna, they say that that's the reason that they're punishing you. So of course they punish you because somebody's not going to drink the whole thing. Throughout the whole thing, they do this every like half an hour or so. So at the end, it's pretty hilarious in retrospect because People were just like, oh, I can't drink any more water. Just water all over them. But that whole entire day, we spent just from the moment they started till about till we went to bed at night. I mean, they just literally made us do push-ups, sit-ups, run around, just do crazy exercise. They introduced us to every exercise we were gonna we were gonna do during basic training. So from that point forward, they just said, hey, do this, and we knew exactly what they're talking about. And the only respite we got was meals, where when you go to your meal, you. Uh, when, when you go to eat, you think, all right, finally I get a little break. And lo and behold, what ends up happening is that as you're sitting there eating, they make you stand up. So you have to eat standing up. You're holding your tray, you're eating standing up, and they're yelling at you the whole time. So it was just completely bewildered. It made me realize that, you know what, next time I'm going to go do something, even though there's no preparation for that. But at least if I would have known that there's a week zero and then it leads into the, just this brutality, I would have been prepared for what was coming. And that, the last thing I'll say is this, is that when... You know, when I, when I went through that day, at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I've heard it a million times, but I never really truly realized the truth of this phrase. But if it doesn't kill you, it'll only make you stronger. And here I am, Mr. Toastmaster. Wow.